Good morning, everybody, and happy Sunday. It is Mel from Melamori Nursery, and I have with me Baby She Easton, who is the Easton Sculpt by Bountiful Baby. And, oh my goodness, I notice a hair. Um, and I am going to participate in uh, Tam's... Um, tag today which is so blue dolly sunday and oh i can't remember the last time i had this little one on but i put her in this lovely outfit and also um tam also had a very interesting video i i just found it so fascinating um lately by the way i've watched a ton of videos but i've been listening to them folks because i've been kind of running around so i've had my ear pods in i've been listening to your videos and glancing down and so i haven't actually been commenting uh so if you see like after four videos me going on about how i've watched your last four videos and you know this big huge explanation or if you just don't see me commenting I, I i swear i'm watching your videos i swear um i just i just haven't been commenting or you know uh something has interrupted that comment i just want to put that out into the void i've been answering a lot of emails and other you know uh other items in my life that have been going on of course family as we all have and you know just the normal stuff so um tam had a uh, video on this morning and she was talking about a event that happened to her some years ago on a trip that she went to take and it was an unexplained sort of event that happened and i thought you know gosh i have i have a ton of these stories a ton folks um and I thought I'd share one with you all today, and I'm going to give credit for this tag to Tam from Thomason's Once Upon a Nursery. Uh, she didn't call the tag anything in particular, so Tam, if you're okay with it, I'm going to name the tag, but give you the credit for it so that everybody could, you know, then say it's from you. It's your tag. It's not my tag. Um... So Baby She Easton has been hanging out in the swing for some time. She's been in the Barefoot Club. And uh, So Blue Dolly Sunday is, is, uh, is a, a theme where, you know, even if you just have like a hair bow that's blue or a pair of socks that's blue um, for Tam, she that's fine. She just wanted to you know, um, see more blue, <clears throat> pardon me, <coughs> in the community. There goes my back, folks. So I was debating, you know, because I, I actually noticed maybe about six or so weeks ago, maybe two months ago, that I hadn't a whole lot of blue, and I went nuts and got a whole bunch of blue. And so then, now I... <laughs> It goes from one extreme to the other, doesn't it? You know, you, you, now I have like lots of blue. And so I wanted to do sort of a, you know, change on this little girl that had blues and pinks because I love pinks on Baby She Easton. So this is her juniper. And ironically, uh, Tam's uh, uh, darling little doll that she had on her channel is named Juniper. So I thought it was fitting. And that's how I, I came to choose Baby Chishi Easton by, by association. So um, I am going to take off her little soother. And uh, I noticed on a couple of channels too, and somebody had told me this a while ago too, um, Bountiful Baby. Uh, and I think this uh, can relate with the Peaches Sculpt from Bountiful Baby as well. Bountiful Baby Reborns, uh, not Realborns, but the Reborns. And I think it was my friend um, 
Tracy, who I, I just did a box opening from, who told me this. Bountiful baby reborns do not come with a COA. Okay, folks? They do not come with one. The real borns do. The reborns do not. So uh, I don't think you're missing the COA. Uh, they just don't come with one. So uh, I just wanted to put that out there in the void. Um, the way you can check is to go on Bountiful Baby site and it will tell you there. So I've been doing a lot more of looking into all of that. So while I'm chattering away, I will start taking this little girl down. Maybe I should tell you what I'm putting on her before I even begin my chatterbox. I don't know. I don't know if this onesie will fit, but it's a nice like blue with the flower on it. And I believe this is like it's next baby. And I always forget where the tags are. It's up to one month. So it should fit her. I mean, she is a bigger baby. She is 23 inches long. So I'm hoping it'll be snug. And then these are really dark blue, like uh, bloomer pants. And these are child of mine and it says 18 months, but I did shrink them down. And it's got, you know, the typical bow. And it's got little swans, pink swans and flowers on them. And then I was just going to put this little pink bonnet on her and just regular socks and just just to be cool some um really cozy slippers to tie in the pink all together now if you happen to be um chosen for my um friend mail of the month um then this month i will be sending a pair of these slippers probably in the pink um, I won't give you a choice. You won't know who you are and, uh, you'll just find a package show up in your mail. But I have, I have most of the package done already. I'm just looking now because, uh, I've been getting the package together to go out, um, with the sale of, you know, a couple of my dolls that I have sold. So uh, I wanted to do that all at once, but I ordered a bunch of stuff from AliExpress for that, um, that uh, friend mail of the month. So uh, hopefully I can figure out the um, mail system after next month, after the like 17th of June, because where I live in this city, they are not doing paper anymore at the post office. It has to all be online. Okay, little girl, I think we have to undo the snaps at the bottom. So yeah, so, and my printer has been acting up. Like, it's not even the pr printer per se. It's the, um, it doesn't want to connect somehow uh, between my internet and the printer. So um, because of that, I'm going to have to figure it out or get my daughter over. <laughs> like um, my, my oldest daughter's husband, he's an IT um, tech. So it's just they've been working a lot on their new house and it's a fixer upper house. So they've been investing almost every spare second that they have into getting uh, what they can afford for now uh, fixed up. And, um, so, um, time is, is more of the issue, not so much, um, not so much the fact that they don't want to help their mom, I mean, or in my daughter's, uh, fella's case, mother-in-law. Um, so she is a darling girl. I'm just wondering what size this particular onesie is on her. So, okay, um, I always do that. This big, dramatic, drastic sigh as if, you know, the story is going to be, you know, I'm just checking the size here. So this is zero to three months. I'm not sure if we can get this blue one on her or not. And I'm dropping papers. I have to like take notes to make sure. I think that would fit her. 
if I took the white one off. So maybe I will take the white one off. Um, so what happened to me? I mean, I think there was a tag going around about what happened to me a while back too, but this is more of the supernatural, unexplained kind of tag. And so I guess it could have been both, um, but I'm not going to name it that because that tag has been out there and I did not sadly participate in that. I'd planned on it. I plan on doing a lot of things, but I'd never actually gotten to that tag, sadly. Um, but when I was a little girl, I, I was just before I was 12, I had my tonsils taken out and there are two, three stories regarding this event because I nearly died. Um, and I was actually, um, I was actually in a coma for, I think they said 47 hours or something like that, um, because of it. So what had happened was, um, I had my tonsils taken out and it, it, you know, back in the day, they used to take tonsils out all the time. I mean, you know, it was just something that they did if you were affected by that. And so, um, the problem was, is that the intern that was in there with the doctor did not, for whatever reason, complete stitching me up. And I bled for hours into my stomach and uh, nearly died. I, I slipped into a coma. And um, that, that part of the story I'm going to leave for now. But uh, in healing... Um, because I came from like a big split family, they didn't want to send me home to uh, my family to heal because I was recovering from such an event. Um, so I guess this was about four months later and I was very, very tiny. Uh, you know, for my age. Um, and I had gone with my grandparents and we were um, camping and my grandparents had a, a dog, a fairly large dog, part wolf. And if anybody knows part wolf dogs, they know they're very um, pack orientated. And it was on a trucking road, um, but that road was supposed to be closed. And it was a steep graded road. And my grandmother had allowed me, and the dog, uh, my grandparents' dog was named Nanook. And um, my grandmother um, didn't want me to take the dog too far because Nanook weighed about 110 pounds. And I weighed, I don't know. I would say maybe 90 pounds. So he outweighed me for sure. And um, you know, this, this story may sound completely unbelievable folks. And you know, sometimes I tell myself it, it can't possibly have happened, but uh my grandparents backed it up. Uh, it actually changed changed my grandparents' view of a lot of things in their life um, after this event had happened. So my grandmother had said to take Nanook up to this trail. And when I got to the top of the trail, I could let Nanook off the lead. And so I did. And it was a steep uprise. And Nanook ran to the top of the um the rise which was like all rocks and whatnot it was a gravel road and he started to come down like whip down you know as animals do they're free and they get to run and that road which was a trucking road was supposed to be closed you know and i heard the truck 
It was a great big 18 wheeler. I heard the truck just as Nanute got to the top of the rise and had turned around and was coming full hilt down the side of the mountain. And I froze. I completely, absolutely froze in fear. Uh, it's one of those feelings you get in life, folks, when you see something happening in your mind and you absolutely cannot do a thing about it. You can't change the trajectory of what's about to happen. And uh, I remember being terrified. Nanook ran toward the truck and thankfully the truck passed, but the back wheel caught Nanook's uh, right paw, right front paw. And he laid there and the trucker kept going. And I was about a quarter mile out of the camp at that point. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, and like I said, folks, this is my, my recollection of it. It can be believed or not believed, but this is what I remember. Um... I heard a voice tell me very clearly to go to the dog. It was a male voice to go to the dog, to sit down, to take off my shoe, to take off my sock, to wrap the sock around the dog's paw. And it was a list of instructions like this, to lift the dog and to walk. And I don't recall lifting the dog. I don't recall walking back into camp. It was all gravel road. All I know from this point on is my grandparents said they saw me come into camp carrying Nanook, who was wolf, by the way, and wolf dogs, when they are hurt, don't let anybody near them. I was carrying Nanook, and I laid him down right at my grandfather's feet and collapsed on the ground. Um, and then they took over very quickly and um, got Nanook help. And, um, but they couldn't figure out for the life of them how I had managed to carry a 90 pound girl, how I could manage to carry a, a dog that was so large, that weighed 120 pounds. Um, and to this day, I don't recall how I was able to do that. I wasn't going to put a sweater on her, but I just, she just looks like she's about to go outside and it's still a little nippy. So I'm going to get this sweater on her too. She's still wearing white, but look at that. Like sweaters just go so well. That changed everything about my grandparents. My grandfather always had a belief in divine intervention. He believes that divine intervention help happened that day. He knew how important that animal was to my grandparents. Um, but the fact that I had been recovering um, from almost dying, from being in a coma, sent to them, and then was able to carry a dog back into camp, a wounded dog back into camp, was completely unbelievable to them. And my grandfather actually wrote a book about it. Um, and the book got published. Uh, it actually did very well. My grandfather was a writer as well. And um, all the facts on, on the book were confirmed. So, uh, that has always been a part of my life. Um, but that was one of three incidences 
around that um, event where my tonsils got taken out um, was that event where uh, Nanute got hit by the 18-wheeler. And um, in case you're wondering, his, his paw um, was broken. He had a cast on for a while. My grandmother, by the way, never, ever, ever looked at me the same way again. There was always a little bit of hesitation and uh, maybe fear even uh, when she looked at me. Um, my grandfather was more open to it. Um, and it was a camp of elderly people, which is why I was sent there to um, sort of have a quiet recovery and then when this happened it changed it changed everything in that camp so i don't share this story very often uh it's sort of a campfire story where people either believe it sometimes or they just don't believe it um but that is my that is my um, very true um, event that happened to me that I've never quite been ever able to explain. And so on this very normal day, I tell a very extraordinary story that... I believe happens to all of us in some way. Uh, I still don't know what to make of it. I, I absolutely believe in divine intervention. I've seen enough of it in my life. Um, absolutely enough of it in my life. Um, and that, that wasn't the only thing in my life that has ever happened to me. Of course, like I said, I've had uh, quite a number of other things. And um, so what do you make of that? What do you make of that? And do you want to participate in this um, sharing of these stories as well? Because, you know, whether our memories are flawed or, or whether these events are accurate, they're still stories. Um, and with our stories, there's a magic, you see, and in that magic is a sharing. And so today, folks, I want to thank you all very much. Uh, baby She Easton is looking beautiful in this pink little bonnet. I've got some more bonnets coming. I, I jumped on the gun when I saw Susan over at Noodlebug Nursery. Noodlebug, I think that's what it is, Noodlebug Nursery. Um, say she was making bonnets and I was like she had already purchased fern by the way she had already purchased fern and I was like um, that was a nutty day by the way so if, if you were one of the people that um, had been looking for uh, that particular doll you know uh, Susan was, was you know she was right there like white on rice and, and so she you know so she had already gotten the doll, and then and then uh, I'd watched her next video where she announced she was getting the doll, and she said she she was making bonnets, and I was like, finding bonnets. I had purchased a whole bunch, and when I got them, they were absolutely massive, like massive, and I donated the whole lot to the women in need, um, because they fit children two to three years old. You know what I'm saying? Like little girls two to three years old. Uh, this one I think I got from AliExpress, but the seller only had one. And then you've got, you know, you've got the shipping as well and all of that, so they're not cheap. And I just found myself on AliExpress ordering some more frilly bottoms because Chris from Chris's Cuddles has got me addicted to, you know, frilly bottoms. And I was looking around for more frilly bottoms. These ones don't have any frilly bottoms. They're just plain plain little dark blue they look almost black but they they're not they're dark blue and she's got light blue here so there is baby she east and let me just sit her up so you can all see her 
Oh, see this little girl sitting up. Isn't she a little doll? I mean, I know she's a doll, but oh, let's cross her legs, sweetheart. What I really love about uh, this particular sculpt is that I don't see very uh, many of her. Um, and she is a beautiful size. She's a lovely size to dress. And like I said, this is up to one month. These are 18 months. I mean, all sizes, right? They could just, you know. So uh, back to the friend mail again. Um, if you want to participate in the friend mail, you simply have to go to my Instagram, which is the same name as my YouTube channel. And you just simply, you know, write what you've overcome or something positive in your life or just, uh, you know, something you're proud of about yourself or even just to say hi with your mailing address, please. Um, my email is only for if you don't have Instagram, folks, okay? That's only if you don't have Instagram, okay? And like I said, uh, that will be random at my choosing. Uh, and, you know, it's not, it's not because there's a, a, you know, a sad sob story or anything like that. It, it, it's just, I'll go through them all and I might say have a number in my mind. Like, for example, I might say, okay, the 11th person who, who had emailed me gets it. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it by anything, you know, um, deep or <laughs> nothing like that. I'm just going to, I'm going to write down a number on a piece of paper and I'm going to count off everybody who's, you know, and then, you know, once you, you get it once, I mean, you'll be entered in continually, but if you get a friend mail, you won't get one, you know, after that. I mean, you know, I'm going to work on the other people, but, um, and I don't know how long I'll be doing that for, uh, but I mean, that's going on. I do have the, um, baby doll, the reborn, uh, giveaway coming up and that is, uh, Chrissy. Um, she's a bountiful baby reborn as well. Uh, that'll be coming up soon. I will let you know. And, um, I pray and hope that everybody is doing uh, fantastic. Please go over and watch uh, Thomason's Once Upon a Nursery. Listen to her story. I mean, um, hers is probably a lot more believable than mine, but, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, I just tell it how it is. So, you know, you can... You can take it to heart or you can just say, well, this is why I'm a writer, you know? Anyway, there is baby She Easton and I am so happy and so thankful that you tuned in today, folks. Thank you for everyone that has taken the time to tune in to me today. And thank you, Tam, for this beautiful hashtag, which is uh, hashtag so blue. Dolly Sunday. There's so many wonderful tags going on. There's a miniature tag going on. There's like, oh my goodness. There's like so, so many going on folks. Um, so I want to thank each and every one of you for coming up with all of those tags. It gives all of us a chance to participate in some way, it gives variety to these channels. Uh, and I just want to thank each and every one of you, not only for watching my channel, but for, you know, putting out content on your channels. Even if you don't see me comment, I am watching uh, and you're entertaining me. You're entertaining everybody else. Uh, your time is precious. You've put that out into the community and it's such a beautiful and loving community. Thank you for being you. Please remember that you're needed, wanted, and loved. And I will see you next time, everybody. Have a blessed and beautiful day. Bye for now.